Premier is here. Premier Heating and Air. Log on today to premierishere.com or call for service. Premier Heating and Air, a locally owned and operated company. This February 1st, 2024 meeting of the Melbourne City Council is hereby called to order. Please stand for our invocation and remain standing for our pledge to the flag. Councilman Mascara will provide the invocation this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the gifts that you give us. Lord, you are the beginning and the end of all our thoughts and things that we should, we should strive today. I want to ask that you bless the citizens of this town and this council as we um, have a meeting today. We do not do your will. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alright, I want to thank everyone for coming this evening. Uh, we're going to begin with the first item in our agenda, which is approval of the January 18th City Council meeting minutes. You've all had an opportunity to review the minutes. Do we have a motion? We have a motion for approval from Councilman Smith and a second from Councilman Colby. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Item number two of our agenda is approval of bills over $15,000. Mr. Powell. Uh, the council has all the bills uh, in their packets. Any questions regarding any of the bills for staff? If not, do we have a motion? We have a motion from Councilman Smith and a second from Councilman Brown. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Item number three of our agenda is approval of purchases over $15,000. Mr. Powell. The um, purchase tonight is for the police department, is for some laptops. Um, this is a purchase from Law Order Technology LLC for 10 laptops in the amount of 23,000, excuse me, 25,596.40. This is, um, last year the council approved the purchase of 30 laptops. We have budgeted for those and, and at the same time we're applying for a grant uh, through the governor's office. Um, the violence prevention grant and we have since been notified that we have received that grant uh, our budget for that grant has been approved the budget actually included 40 laptops so this is the 10 remaining laptops we need to complete that purchase uh, staff recommend that you approve the purchase from a law and order technology all right so this is uh, approving 25,596 uh, is this a reimbursement grant with so yes. this money will be reimbursed by the governor's office violence prevention grant we have any questions for staff regarding this? If not, do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Jones and a second from Councilman Godfrey. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. We'll now move to item number four of the agenda, which is presentation of the city's FY 2023 comprehensive financial report. I believe Mr. Chapman with Nicholas Holland Associates is here to provide this financial overview. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, first off, I want to say I appreciate uh, the city allowing us to provide the uh, audit services for the city. Um, we completed our audit for June 30, 2023. At the end of December, submitted that to the state of Georgia as required by state law on time, so no problems with that. Uh, just a little bit about our firm. We're uh, a local firm here in Dublin, Georgia, serving uh, approximately 75 government, governmental entities across our eight offices. Um, our offices stretch from pretty much here to Rome, Georgia, so we cover a good portion of the state. Um, we have about 250 team members. Uh, right now, it's probably over 250 in the tax season, but we uh, will level out around 250. As far as the engagement team on this engagement, I was a partner on the engagement. I've um, been serving with the firm 17 years. Our quality review partner at our Kennesaw office was Tammy Gavis, and she has uh, 30 years of experience. And the audit supervisor who does the work, the real work on the audit is Jennifer Beal here in that Dublin office. <clears throat> Our responsibility as your auditor to render, render an opinion on the financial statements of the city in accordance with the government generally accepted auditing or accepted accounting standards. And we do that in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. Um, and what that means is that we're providing a reasonable but not absolute opinion on the financial statements that they are free of material mistakes. <coughs> the 
The main thing you're looking for is our opinion on those financials, and I'm uh, pleased to say that we had a clean opinion on the financials, and like I said, that means that the financial statements that were prepared are uh, fairly presented in accordance with accounting principles. Um, we are also in the process of finishing up the single audit, which is on your federal awards. We have one major program this year, is that railroad grant that was a, a required single audit. So uh, at this point, we're expecting an unmodified opinion on that as well. A modified is a uh, accounting jargon for a clean opinion. So that's what you're looking to receive. And the city is required to do those. If they spend more than 750,000 of federal grant money in a year, that triggers a single audit. So that uh, you were subject to that this year. As a part of all that, we do provide a, a communications letter to uh, management that is passed to you. Uh, and I'm just gonna hit a few of the highlights of that letter real quick. Uh, <clears throat> in your financial statements, there's a lot of numbers, but there's also uh, some words. The most significant policy in those words would be number one to the financial statements. That's where uh, the city defines all of their accounting policies. Um, for each item on the financials, there's a, a policy that describes how the city accounts for those items. Uh, as a part of your audit, there's, you know, like I said, hard numbers, cash, I can easily confirm the cash from the bank, and they tell me that the city has X amount of dollars, but in those financials, there's also a lot of estimates. And we review those estimates and the, uh, how the city accounts for those. The major ones of those would be the pension and OPA evaluation that the city uh, uses uh, third-party actuaries to calculate those liabilities. We review the inputs for those reports and uh, rent, uh, found no problems with those. As I said, this, the financial statement disclosure support the financial numbers in the report. So uh, in, the, in the back part of those financials, there's disclosures. We do assist with the preparation of those disclosures based on information provided to us. I uh, had no problems with those disclosures. <coughs> as far as our relationship with management, we did receive cooperate, full cooperation from the city's management staff and others. That doesn't just include the finance department. Uh, our team has to interact with others uh, regarding grants, uh, the police department. Everyone's always uh, gets us what we need as fast, I mean, as quickly as possible. We have no problems with that. No disagreements with management uh, on any accounting issues or point matters. During our audit, there are adjustments made uh, during the process of the audit. Um, so, and a lot of those have to do with the actuary reports. Those don't come in right away. Usually we have the financial uh, trial balance before those evaluation reports come in. So that's the majority, the major adjustments are related to those actuary evaluations. We propose those changes to management. They can either accept or uh, decline to record the adjustment. Management did record any adjustments that were proposed by us, so there were no past adjustments. <clears throat> As a part of our audit at the end, we asked management to provide us with a representation letter. What that means is, is there's a lot of statements in there that pretty much in summary would say, we gave you what you asked for and we told you the truth. So that's uh, part of the audit and that goes in the audit documentation. And as far as independence, we are required to be independent to the city. Um, no, no one on my team can serve on city council or in management, so we are independent in that regard, but it also restricts what kind of services we provide to the city. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to come in and instruct management on how to account for something and then come back and audit. So uh, during the year, we did not provide any services to the city that would impair our independence. Uh, we'll look briefly at a, a couple financial numbers. At this point, you know, this is looking six months back in the rearview mirror, but for the uh, fiscal year 2023, your uh, property taxes and local option sales tax numbers uh, remain rel relatively stable. Loss did pick up a little bit for 2023 but the property tax number dipped slightly on, based on what was collected from the prior year. This pie chart just shows the breakdown of the general fund. Where does the general fund spend the money? The general fund is the main operating fund for the city. And um, no surprise, 53% of your expenditures are for public safety. That's fire and police protection. That's pretty much in line with other government, city governments. That's usually around 50% is what we see on that breakdown. 16% public works, that's your uh, streets and sanitation is paid out of that fund, 15% of the general fund, and then the remaining is housing development, cultural recreation, and judicial that makes up smaller amounts. Looking at general fund balance, there was a 
an increase in the general fund balance from 2022 to 2023, going from 4.9 million to 5.4 million. Uh, that just means that the, the, the inflows to that fund exceeded the outflows uh, by approximately half a million dollars. And a lot, sometimes that can do with timing or, or revenue um, timing, <clears throat> but uh, it's always positive to see that number increasing. The city does uh, meet the uh, recommendation from the governmental finance um, Financial Officers Association, which says 60 days of expenditures should be at least in fund balance. Uh, most governments carry more than that because if you don't, then you may have to go borrow from the bank. So always a good, healthy fund balance keeps you from having to go borrow short term on a, on, a temporal, on a tax anticipation note during the year. Luckily, the city doesn't have to do that because they have a, a healthy fund balance. Just to highlight some of the capital investments for 2023, um, out of the TESLOS fund, uh, almost $4.1 million was spent between Hillcrest Parkway and Stuff Park Road. I think everybody appreciates those investments as we drive through those, uh, those roads. Uh, SLOS fund, a little over $3 million for purchasing um, and financing public safety equipment for public works, water, gas, and vehicles and equipment. And then finally, out of the enterprise fund, what was it funded by SPLOS? An additional $900,000 for uh, equipment infrastructure for those uh, enterprise funds, which would include the water, sanitation, gas, telecom. Looking at your unrestricted net position, this would be the, 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 the unrestricted portion of the uh, enterprise, major enterprise funds that what's available for future investments into those funds, of course, um, you always want to maintain a, a healthy, unrestricted fund position in those funds to fund future developments, any kind of uh, um, repairs, significant repairs that need to be made. All of those funds uh, remain stable or increased during the year, so that's a positive trend uh, for those funds. And then finally, uh, the GFO, a Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting, uh, there, the state has a minimum requirement of what has to be prepared for financial statements. GFOA has a, uh, a, an achievement certificate that you can apply for that's voluntary for the government to apply for that includes not only the basic financial statements but some additional information that gives the public and uh, more information about financial trends of, of the city. The city did submit their 22 audit for consideration and was awarded for the 34th year uh, this and, and not to take that lightly, only 55 cities so out of the 535 municipalities have received this award for 2022. So that's a positive uh, for the city in, in receiving that again this year. And that's all I have. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, <coughs> thank you for the presentation. I'll say that I had an opportunity to review the uh, financial report and there's a lot of great information in there. Anybody in the city, uh, any citizen who's interested um, in pretty much any uh, of the any financial aspect of the operation of city government uh, can get their answers from this financial report. It's, it's well laid out, it's comprehensive, and I, I think it's a very helpful tool for any interested citizen. I did note at the end you have some supplementary materials that have some interesting things such as um, who our largest employers are and I noted that the VA is again our largest employer with uh, I think they're now over 1,600 local employees. Um, that Best Buy is our largest taxpayer, followed closely by YKK. And West Rock is our largest gas user, which is an important part of our city fund. And then our tax rate, property tax rate, is the lowest it's been in over 10 years. So all of that is uh, very positive for, for our town. So thank you for uh, helping put all this information together and reviewing it. Do we have any questions from council members? All right. I don't, Good. but I want to say thank you to Blake and his incredible team for, for making this happen because um, that's something that all, that's important to all of us is being financially responsible for our constituents. So thank you. I'd also like to, yeah, I know Greg mentioned it, but uh, this all that wouldn't be put together without the cooperation of our, of our staff, with Blake and Josh. Uh, leading, the, leading the facts. We appreciate uh, what y'all do on an annual basis to, to continue us 34 years in a row. It takes a lot to put together that book of what, 150 something pages right. probably? Yeah. yeah.
Definitely appreciate it. If any of you guys haven't seen it, this is the book he's referring to, <laughs> and it, it is absolutely comprehensive. It's filled with, with charts and data and, ex uh, and explanations of the book. So it's uh, very interesting, very helpful. So thank, thank you for your work, and thank you, Blake, for what you've done, too. All right. Imagine a life-changing injury. Imagine the fear and unknown. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team, the only physicians in the area with advanced certification in orthopedic sports medicine, treat sports injuries with innovative techniques. The Houston Clinic has helped nearly a million athletes live without pain. Imagine getting back in the game. Imagine the best game of your life. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team. It may be cold elsewhere, but the deals are hot here at Dublin Chevrolet GMC. As you can see, new shipments are coming in weekly to Dublin Chevrolet GMC. So make sure and get to Dublin quick, because as you can see, they're rolling out of here fast. You ask for more inventory and we've delivered. Whether it's the most iconic Chevrolet ever made or the new Chevy Blazer EV, we have it here at Dublin Chevy GMC. And remember, Don sells cars well only at Dublin Chevy GMC. Second reading in public hearing on Ordinance 2401 to annex 331 acres of land. Um, Mr. Powell, do we just need to, to, do you need to read the ordinance before we have our public hearing? Okay, thank you. This is Ordinance 2401 that's annexing and incorporating into the municipality of the city of Dublin, Georgia, 331 acres more or less of land located at parcel 100 067 1 and 2 as M2, General Industrial Zone. The proposed use is the continued development of the Georgia Highway 57 rail service site. It'll be an industrial use there. Um, this property is at the corner of the Highway 441 bypass and Highway 257. Um, 30, excuse me, 60 acres of this property is already um, being used and going to be developed for um, Washington, the project that's announced that's coming to Dublin. And uh, we're thankful for the development authority and their work to to get those industries coming uh, to Dublin, provide the jobs and the investment in our community. Um, this is, includes the entirety of the site. Though, um, as we're going to, the development authority and the county and the city are working together to um, bring some infrastructure improvements to the property that's going to benefit not only Washington but future um, industrial prospects that may come there. So um, we're going ahead and annexing the entire tract. All right, at this time we will close our city council meeting and open a public hearing to receive comments uh, regarding this proposed annexation. If there's anyone who would like to speak either in favor of or against this proposed annexation, now is your opportunity. Please come forward. Uh, the microphone is yours. If anyone would like to speak regarding this proposed annexation. Thank you, Mr. Waldrop. And just for the record, if you can just uh, state your name and your, who you're representing. Good afternoon. I'm Ryan Walter. I'm president of the Dublin Lawrence County Development Authority. We appreciate the, uh, the city's uh, interest in this property. appreciate the city's uh, willingness to work with the Development Authority for the last several years as we have developed this site as a community uh, to, to attract new industry to, to Dublin and, and to Lawrence County. We appreciate all the support we've gotten again from the city, uh, from, from the various departments such as engineering, planning, uh, city manager's office, and of course city and mayors or council and mayor as well. So, Again, we're really excited about this property, not only for Washington and the, uh, the uh, 460 new jobs and $176 million of new investment that that company will bring to our community, but also, you know, it's, it's getting a lot of attraction, continue to get a lot of attraction from other projects across the state. So we're looking for great things as well for the rest of it. Uh, but again, we appreciate the council's favorable support for, for the annexation of this property so services can be provided uh, for, for water, sewer, public safety, and others. Uh, thank you for that. As, as you do represent the applicant, there's normally an opportunity for any council members who have questions for the applicant. Any questions? I know that we spoke in pre-council. If there are no questions, thank you for coming, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who would like to speak regarding this matter? All right, if there's no one else who would like to speak regarding this matter, we'll now, close the, uh, we'll now close the public hearing and turn this matter over to council for action. We have a motion to approve the annexation from Councilman Jones with a second from Councilman Brown. Uh, this will be for a zoning classification of M2. Um, at this time, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? If there is no discussion on the motion, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilman Brown. 
Yes. Councilman Jones. Yes. Councilwoman Godfrey. Yes. Councilwoman Coley. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Councilman Mascara. Yes. Ordinance passes. All right. Well, we're looking forward to continuing to work with the Development Authority. Thank you guys for coming this evening. We appreciate you being here. Thank All right. you. We'll, we'll now move to item number six on the agenda, which is discussion and action on an agreement with Georgia Power. Mr. Powell. Uh, in your material, there's a contract with Georgia Power for the installation of 16 uh, lamppost style street lights along uh, Madison Street. This will be a part of our streetscape project there. Um, there's a $150,000 upfront um, cost for that, and then there's a um, monthly cost of $234.88 thereafter, um, and that's for all $234.88 for all 16, not each. Um, this is uh, this will be part of that streetscape project, and uh, we're looking forward to getting that going. Um, the $150,000 will come from the grant that we've received from the project. Um, the monthly cost will be voted each year. All right, so this is $150,000 for the streetlights on Madison Street to be uh, reimbursed out of the, I can't remember the name of the grant. It's the um, rural downtown. Rural downtown. Okay. okay, the rural downtown grant that we received. So. This will be reimbursed from that grant. Uh, do we have any questions for staff regarding this item? If not, do we have a motion? We have a motion. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Mascara with a second from Councilman Colby. Any discussion on the motion? With no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. That motion passes. <coughs> we'll now move to item number seven on the agenda, which is discussion on an emergency declaration rela related to Church Street Rice Avenue sewer repair project. Mr. Power. This is resolution 2402, a resolution of the city of Dublin, Georgia by and through its mayor and council authorizing the city manager to negotiate a contract for the emergency repair and upgrade of sewer mains at Church Street and Rice Avenue to authorize the mayor to execute and deliver an agreement for said services to provide for an effective date and for other lawful purposes. Um, as has been brought up in previous council meetings and the public has seen, um, we've had an issue with the sewer line over here on North Church Street. Um, staff has been able to go back out uh, since our last meeting and, and do some additional work to try to clear that up, and I believe there's been a temporary fix to that. Um, it's not coming out on the road any longer. Um, but we do, the problem, underlying problem still remains, and we need to replace the <coughs> section of the line there. Um, so uh, we're asking that the council um, declare this an emergency so that we can um, procure the services for the work to be done on, on that basis. All right, um, you've heard Mr. Powell's explanation. Do we have any questions for staff regarding this declaration? Do we know how quickly um, the contract and the bidding will happen for this as soon as we make this motion? As soon as, well, it won't be, be we'll be getting, going dealing directly with a contractor on it, but um, it's gonna depend on their schedule, but uh, we're gonna find something and hopefully we can get this work pretty, pretty quickly. And it's being designed right now, right? It is still in design. Any other questions? All right, do we have a motion? Second. We have a motion from Councilman Mascara and a second from Councilman Godfrey for the declaration of emergency for the sewer repair project, which will allow the city manager to move forward without having to go through the normal uh, bidding procedures. Uh, any discussion regarding this motion? If there's no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. All right, we're now moved to, we will now move to item number eight on the agenda, which is a declaration of surplus. Mr. Powell. Uh, in your materials is a listing of uh, items that uh, we no longer have use for. Um, mostly it's coming from the police department. There's some um, equipment there, um, holsters, uh, belt buckles, pistol holders. Uh, we have a load of uh, water meters there, 596 of those. Um, those are, as council knows, we've been replacing uh, several of our water meters each year in the last two years, and these are some of those that we've removed. Um, we'd like to try to sell those. Some other cities may be interested in them. Um, and then we've got some other various items from City Hall and the City Clerk's Office, as well as um, an old 1975 John Deere back there from the golf course. Um, I think it's been coming on me to, to let you know also that impersonating a police officer is a crime. So if you do purchase any of these items, <laughs> please govern yourselves accordingly. Yeah. Councilman. I say that for councilman, which is as much as I do. Oh. All right. So uh, you, excuse me. 
Do you have a photograph of the tractor, the backup? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Um, council has had an opportunity to review this. Any questions for staff regarding the surplus? If not, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Jones and a second from Councilman Colby to declare these items surplus. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. <coughs> opposed? The ayes have it. Um, item number nine on board appointments will be deferred to the next meeting, so it is now time for citizens' comments. Hi, I'm Tom Dominey. Here at Dublin Wynn Nelson, we pride ourselves on providing the industry's highest quality products at the most competitive pricing. We are a full service wholesaler specializing in plumbing, irrigation, and industrial products. With a staff that collectively offers more than 50 years of expertise, our team knows your industry and we can answer your questions and help you get the parts and equipment you need. From Moen to Renai, we carry the plumbing, irrigation, and industrial products you need from the brands you trust. We also carry a great lineup of Milwaukee tools. At Dublin with Nelson, our goal is the long-term success of your business. We achieve that goal with a simple commitment, doing things right, one customer at a time. If you have a question, or if you're looking for a hard-to-find part, give us a call. Our experts are ready to help. Order online, give us a call, or come by at 507 Airport Road in Dublin. We're committed to building long-term relationships with our customers by earning your business every day. We invite y'all to come down to Holy Smokes Barbecue, Dublin's fresh everyday barbecue source. 1100 Hillcrest Parkway, 272 Ribs. You can place your orders online, DublinBBQ.com. We're all about faith, family, and friends. And remember, life's too short to eat bad barbecue. Remember, later this summer or early fall, our second location at 2123 South Highway 441, the old Shoney's building, we're remodeling that up so we'll be able to better serve you, offer more of our grilled options and other things that we do. So we're so thankful for you, Dublin. You guys have been so good to us, and we just want to invite you guys just to come on and experience what we think good barbecue is. Ms. Browning, our clerk, will set a timer for three minutes, so there's a maximum <coughs> comment period of three minutes per person. Is there anyone who would wish to speak this evening? Ms. Morton. Yeah, I think it's kind of a formality that I even introduce myself now, y'all know me. <clears throat> but I'm Vonda Morton, proud eighth generation native of the sovereign state of Georgia. And since February is Georgia History Month, I thought I'd take a little time this evening to give y'all a brief outline of the early history of our sovereign state that y'all seem to have no pride in or allegiance to. Did y'all know that Georgia was originally explored by DeSoto? Um, the Spanish called the area Guali, and while they explored extensively, with DeSoto passing just north of what's Lawrence County, no permanent Spanish settlements resulted although there were a string of successive missions set up along the coast. In 1733, the British colony of Georgia was chartered, but it wasn't actually settled until 1733, which is the actual date that is of our establishment. Georgia was the last of the 13 original colonies founded. It had some interesting prohibitions in its original charter. No slavery, no booze, no lawyers. I kind of like that last one. Um, Georgia originally had no governor, but was governed by a board of trustees. While founder James Edward Oglethorpe had originally envisioned Georgia as a haven for those facing London's debtors' prisons, in reality, no debtors were among the original settlers. Georgia was basically to be a military buffer between the Spanish in Florida and the British in South Carolina. When Oglethorpe and his settlers made landfall at Lam Yamacraw Bluff in modern Savannah on February 12, 1733, they immediately set about establishing peaceful relations with the Muscogee Band, known as the Yamacraw, under the leadership of Chief Tomachichi. Their efforts were aided by Mary Musgrove, whose mother was Creek and whose father was English. She acted as an interpreter between the colonists and the Yamacraws. 
And I know time is limited, so that's about it for now. I'll give you a little more history at the next council meeting. For now, you don't know the drill. Somebody at these meetings needs to honor our sovereign state. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag and to the principles for which it stands, wisdom, justice, moderation, and courage. Thank you, Ms. Morton. I will note that February 12th is uh, Georgia Day in the state of Georgia, honoring the date that Old Fourth of the 116 uh, companions landed in Savannah. So that's uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. Any other citizens' comments this evening? All right, if there are none, then we will move to <coughs> comments. Mr. Gruber, city attorney, any comments this evening? Good All right, thank you. Ms. Browning? Thank you. All right, Ms. Brown. I'd just like to, uh, again, just echo what has been said already. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chapman, for your presentation, and we'll thank our staff for their coordination and uh, helping with that presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you for those comments. Mr. Jones? Thank you, Mr. Miller. I thank you all for coming out. I thank um, Mr. Chapman and the um, staff, and Mr. Blake, for a wonderful job with the financial um, report, comprehensive report. I also like to thank the staff, um, city manager, um, county commission, um, Mr. Jimmy Chain, and um, direct authority for the wonderful job we've done over at O'Connor Gym with the goalposts, giving me, giving me a feel real. Thank you for doing that. And for what's coming, that's just the beginning, but I thank the hard work that we've been putting forth over there is coming forth. I thank you for all that we're doing, showing the citizens that we are trying to make an improvement over there on that side of town, and I think we're doing a wonderful job. So um, thank you, everyone. Um, enjoy. Be safe out there. And um, I know this is also Black History Month, so let's learn the history. Thank you. All right. Thank you for those comments, Mr. Jones. Ms. Godfrey. Thank you, Mayor. I have no comments, though. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Councilman Colby. No comments. Um, Mr. Smith, Councilman uh, Smith. Thank you everyone for coming out today. Uh, Tara, if you could, can you give uh, the citizen an update on O'Connor? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're putting you on the spot, Ms. Bradshaw. Do you mind just it's telling quick, us quick, to, quick. Tell us what's going on? I understand that there's... Uh, you the, want me to do it from here or do you want me to come to the microphone? If you don't mind coming to the microphone real quick. <laughs> right. <Okay. Yeah. laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the list. Yes. See you next weekend. Um, so, uh, as you all know, we have um, engaged Brian Felder with Felder and Associates. We had our first committee meeting in December. Over the last 45 days, uh, Mr. Felder and his team have been working on a design for Oconee Gym. We have a preliminary design, and Garvin has just wrapped up the first round of um, budgets for that project. And next, we'll go back. So, we have three committee meetings on the books um, to have with them. First, we want to go through and get all the input that's represented the community. Then uh, our architect will come back and say, okay, this is what you can afford out of all this, the big wish list items. And so that's what the committee will review next. And then we'll come back and finalize the plans. We hope to do that um, in February will be our next one. And we hope to do our final um, meeting by the end of March, early April. And then that way it'll be ready to start construction within the next two or three months, however long it takes Garbutt to then kind of marshal all everything together. So, um, I, and in part of that, they'll come back to the city with the final budget and you'll approve all of that for the project. All right, well, thank you for that update. And I also okay. want to- Is that uh, enough more questions? questions? Any oh, yeah. other questions or anyone? Oh yeah, if you want to uh, speed cushion or anything, make sure you go on our website or contact Ms. Tara or Felicia. That's it, uh, yes, please, uh, on the website, there's a traffic calming Web page or yes, please call any of the staff and we'll be happy to put in the information for you. All right, all right thank you. I also want to thank the volunteers on the uh, Coney Gym uh, Community Steering Committee. I know y'all had one meeting and have another meeting coming up, so appreciate uh, those people who are serving in that committee. Mr. Mascara, any comments this evening? I don't have any comments this evening. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Powell. Uh, like to thank you, Mr. Chapman and Blake Angles for all the work you just straight on my family. All right, I want to thank everyone for coming. This meeting is now adjourned.